This is the fifth in a series of videos exploring arrays in Delphi. In the last video, we declared and used two-dimensional arrays to display the distance between two cities. We use this table to populate the two-dimensional array. In this video, we will finish the project. We must use the same array with loops to list all the distances in the array in this list box. If you are new here, first watch lesson 16.1 to 16.8 and lesson 17.1 to 17.4 to get a better understanding of loops and arrays. Hi, it's Karat here from Learn Delphi. I'm a trainer in programming languages and in this series I help you to understand Delphi programming step by step and line by line. If this video is helpful to you, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And I also publish all the links I mention in this video in the description box below. In all our lessons, I start with the code immediately. I do not demonstrate how to create the graphical user interface. That is so that you only focus on the code of the lesson we are doing. You can go back to the beginning of the series to learn how to create graphical user interfaces. If you want to finish the project with me, you can download the starter project to start immediately where I start with this lesson. The start and project files are available for download from my Patreon page at patreon.com slash learndelphi. I also posted that link in the description. And I'm using Delphi 10.3 Community Edition to demonstrate these lessons. There's also a link in the description if you want to download the free copy of Delphi. You can pause the video here and go and do the downloads. Here I have my project open in Delphi. If you have your project open, let's jump into it. Here's how it looks. But let's first run the program to see what we did last time. Here we show the names of four major world cities. In front of the names are the numbers you must use in these two spin edits to indicate the city of departure and the city of destination. When you click the button, the panel must display the distance between the two cities. New York is city 1. If you want to see the distance between New York and Sydney, you must select one from the first spin edit and three from the second one. Then you click the button. The distance between New York and Sydney is 16,200 kilometers. We use this table to populate a two-dimensional array. We pick the distance from the array where column one and row three intersect. Change the destination to number four. Number four is Tokyo. Click the button. The distance between New York and Tokyo is 10,880 kilometers. Let's do another one. Select three for the city of departure and one for the destination. Click the button. The distance between Sydney and New York is 16,200 kilometers. Close the form. Double click the show distance button. Let's quickly walk through this code. We declared two byte variables to store the city number selected in the two spin edits. We also declared a two dimensional array named ARR distances. The first dimension of the array has four elements. And the second dimension also has four elements because we have four cities of departure and four cities of destination. This array stores 16 distances of type integer. Here we read the city numbers in the spin edits and assign them to the two byte variables. And with these 16 statements, we assign distances from this table to all the elements of the array. Notice the array has two index numbers between square brackets. That is because the array has two dimensions. These four statements store the distances for row 1, column 1, to row 1, column 4. And these four statements store the distances for row 2, column 1, to row 2, column 4, and so on. The last statement reads the numbers from the spin edits that is now stored in the two byte variables, and we use those values to retrieve the corresponding element from the array. The result is then converted to a string and concatenated with a literal string. Then the whole lot is assigned to the caption of the panel. Now we must also use this two-dimensional array with this button to list all the distances. The array is currently only accessible to the code in this event handler because we declare it inside the event handler. Remove the array declaration here. Scroll to the implementation clause. We will declare the array here to make it accessible to both buttons. Type var. Enter and type ARR distances as array 124, 124 of integer. The array has two dimensions, four elements for the first dimension and four elements for the second dimension. And the array will now exist when the program starts, but it will only get values when you click this button. 
if you click this button first, the array will still be empty. So the user must always click this button first so that the other button can see the distances in the array. But that is not what we want. We want both buttons to read the populated array, regardless which button is clicked first. So the array must be populated with values as early as possible, even before the user clicks one of the buttons. We can do that when the form is created in memory. In other words, in the event handler that handles the forms on create event. Let's do that. Click the design tab. Double click a blank space on the form surface. The on create event will execute before you click any one of the two buttons. So we will assign values to the elements of the array here. Scroll up to the event handler that populates the array. These 16 lines assign distances to the elements of the array. Select all 16 lines. Cut it from this event handler. Go between the begin and end statements of the form's create event handler. Now paste the 16 lines of code here. Let's make sure our previous code still works as expected. Run the program. Select three from the first pin edit and two from the second one. Now we must see the distance between Sydney and London. Click the button. The distance between Sydney and London is 17,020 kilometers. Here we can also see it in the assignment statements. Select two and four. The distance between London and Tokyo is 9,600 kilometers. So it still works. Close the form. Click the design tab. Double click this button. Go above begin, type var, enter and type ARR city names as array one to four of string. Here we declare a single dimensional array with four elements for the four city names. Press enter, type BTE row, comma BTE column as byte. We declare two byte variables to cycle through the indices that represent the rows and columns. Go under begin. Type this statement. Here we assign NYC for New York City to the first element of the array. Let's do the same for London. London will be index 2. And index 3 will be for Sydney. And index 4 is Tokyo. Make a new line. Type 4. BTE row. Colon equals 1 to 4. Go one line down and type begin. Press enter. We will build our output in phases and test the code regularly to see what's happening after every step. Start by typing LST distance table dot items dot add and between the brackets type ARR city names followed by square brackets and between the brackets BTE row. Here we cycle through the array four times to list the city names in the list box. Run the program. Click the button. Each city name displays in its own row in the list box. Close the form. We now want to show the columns of each row. Make a new line under the begin statement of the loop. Type 4 BTE column colon equals 1 to 4. Go one line down and type begin. Put your cursor behind this statement and press enter. Delphi adds an end statement for the loop. Indent this statement. Now run the application again. Click the button. We get 16 items in the list box. Each city name is displayed four times. Let's see why. When the loop enters the first time, the value in BTE row is 1. Then we enter the nested loop. Now BTE column is also 1. 
Then this statement gets the first city, which is New York, and adds it to the list box. The inner loop then enters a second time. The value in BTE column increments to 2, but the value in BTE row stays 1. Then this statement gets the first city again because BTE row is still 1. City 1 is New York, and we add it to the list box a second time. After that, the inner loop enters a third time. The value in BTE column increments to 3, but the value in BTE row stays 1. Then this statement gets the first city again, because BTE row is still 1. City 1 is New York, and we add it to the list box a third time. The inner loop then enters a fourth time. The value in BTE column increments to 4, but the value in BTE row stays 1. Then this statement gets the first city again, because BTE row is still 1. The first city is New York, and we add it to the list box a fourth time. That is the end of the inner loop, so the compiler jumps back to the outer loop because it is not done yet. Now BTE rows increment to 2. Then the compiler enters the inner loop and BTE column starts from 1 again. This statement then gets city 2, which is London, and displays it in the list box for the first time. The whole process will repeat another 3 times by the inner loop, and London will also display 4 times before the outer loop increments BTE rows again to display Sydney 4 times. And after that, the outer loop increments BTE row a last time, where after the inner loop cycle again 4 times to display city 4, which is Tokyo, also 4 times. Close the form. Place your cursor here between the square bracket and the round bracket and add this to the back. Here we concatenate the word 2, where after we also concatenate an element of the array. But this time we use the value in BTE column as the index. Run the program again. Click the button. Now we have 16 different combinations of cities. Close the form. Place your cursor in front of the closing round bracket. Press Enter to continue with the statement on a new line. Align the closing bracket with its opening bracket. Now type this code. Here we concatenate an equal sign to the output. Then we also concatenate the elements of the two-dimensional array that stores the distances. Remember the two-dimensional array stores integers, so we must convert the distance to a string first. Press enter again and concatenate the word kilometers to the output. This is how this statement will display the results. Run your program for a last time. Click the button. Now verify if your output matches the table and also compare the distances with the values you assign to the array. If you are happy with this result, you can close the form and save the project. Next time, we will explore dynamic arrays with a new project. If you enjoyed this lesson, please leave a comment. And if you learned something new, please like, subscribe and share my lessons with your friends. Thank you for watching, and a special thank you to my supporters on Patreon.com. Happy coding! See you next time!